about what you have to say. And what you will be missing. I am sad that he is dead. I am I'm confused. I'm, I'm thinking what is life really. We struggle so hard, we try so hard, and it ends up somehow. All of us have to die one day. Make sure that whatever you do is a testimony to who you are. And after some time, it will, stay, it will stand with you. People who hear your name will respect you and they will love what you do. That is the only thing. Life is nothingness. What we do in life is nothingness. Everything that we gather together is nothingness. Totality is vanity. The only most important thing is what we do with our time impactful it is the members of the society. It's very important. Uh, but, uh, I mean, are there things you think you live well for that will be some kind of consolation at the time that he has here the past? You live a good revolutionary life. Revolution is not a simple thing. It's a very difficult thing. Revolution is very difficult to, to do. He tried his best. He was a positive voice to change Nigeria. He fought for the urban nation that Nigeria will be restructured and ordered, and that the governance will be centralized, decentralized, preferably decentralized, so that every part of Nigeria will have their own autonomy inside Nigeria. He was not fighting for succession. He was fighting for integration of Nigeria. It's a very good political thing that we have to remember. And there are so many things happening in Nigeria now. Some are fighting for the succession of the Igbo land. Some are saying that Yoruba should be succeeded from Nigeria. Odumaki understood the importance of a free a united African country. Nigeria is the largest country in Africa. And that what we need to do is the is the reorganization of the country to make everybody have a sense of belonging and growth. Would you say you agree with that line of thought? I mean, you are helping to clear the head because a lot of people believe uh, since he was asking for restructuring, he was also pitching tent with those asking for cessation. And you have helped to clear the head. No, you are the there are two there are two conditions of a free Nigeria. The secession of the various nations inside the country. Number two, the reorganization and restructuring of the nations inside Nigeria to give them their freedom. So you choose whichever one you belong. But it is uh, adept intellectualism to know that an independent country in Africa is very important. Nigeria is very important for Africa. We don't have to fight to destroy this country. But we can struggle to make it much more equitable and organized and prosperous. Yes. So that's, you what, you that's what Inca stood for. Uh, well, I think um, when uh, the, when the, the Obas and the prominent uh, uh, city of Yoruba gathered together in Ibadan, it was there, we were together when the idea of uh, Matekun came to reality. So he was there. And um, he made a very, 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 very encouraging contribution that nothing wrong in having our own security in, so that um, the external forces will not dominate us. Since 
we are not in control of police. The police is being controlled by the federal government, and there's nothing wrong. And uh, <clears throat> the capacity of police are not enough. Then having Amateko around, we couple, we, we, we support the police, and that we help us in uh, strengthening the security uh, network in the southwest. And that has come to reality. And you um, call Udmaki and some others made Nigeria to understand that terrorism, hooliganism, killings and maiming of innocent people cannot do us any good. And uh, for those who are into that business, they've been engaging in a series of kidnapping targeting prominent uh, traditional rulers, including prominent citizens of ours. And that is not good enough. And for us as a race, as a nation, Yoruba is a nation, we are more than uh, 70 million all over the world. So definitely, to secure our own lives, there is no law that says we must not secure our lives. Because of Nigeria secure us, and uh, for us to make that constitution to bite, it is for us to join us together, strengthen our security. So what he has uh, canvassed for in his lifetime, he has come to reality. And that is, that is the, the, there's nothing you need again. Now you have a dream and your lifetime, your dream come to reality. You should give, ground to, to give glory to Almighty. Have you said that? We must be vigilant. We must be vigilant, and all of us must come together as one. That the security of life and property is not for the police alone and army. All of us must have our security as an informant. What is happening around us in Nigeria now called for total reflection, and it also called for every one of us to have rethink how do we get here? Where are we going? What the future have for us? Already, kidnapping is already on the doorsteps of rulers. If you say it's not there, you are deceiving yourself. It is the meat of the antelope of yesteryear that you are still eating. For those who believe in the egalitarian society, we align with the dream and aspiration of Udumaki. And that all of us should, be, should come together as one. We must be vigilant when it comes to security of lives and properties. Security of a, 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 a nation where the life of citizens are not guaranteed. That is not called a nation. Nation where lives and properties are taken serious. That is a nation. And I give kudos to him and I preach. I said, may God rest his soul. Yes, sir. Uh, this is Ocean State. And we understand you are here to identify with family. Only comrade in Kaudubai. First, how would how did you react to the news? Well, I, well, I, I, I felt uh, sad because I've, I heard that he was, he was healed. But uh, as at the time I saw him at the Ghanifa Wemi annual lecture organized by the Nigerian Biostation Ikeja branch, I thought he was on his way to recovery. But people told me that he was, he was much, much bad before then. So it was so sad uh, to have lost him. Especially being a, a younger person, we know that uh, life expectancy in Nigeria is quite short. But you also wish that people like uh, Yinka, you know, lives uh, longer because of uh, his belief in a better society, uh, in a better Nigeria, uh, in the rights of uh, the nationalities and uh, the rights of uh, Nigerian people that say, "Oh." A lot of people wish that we would not miss so much that is departing, but are there things that uh, you think people will be able to carry on as part of the Gospels he preached, especially for his, as part of restructuring before his passing? Well, obviously his, uh, his death has uh, helped to renew the debate on uh, the kind of country that we want. Because uh, when you talk about you know, restructuring, uh, it's also about the kind of Nigeria that we want. Nobody can deny the fact that what we have now, what we call Nigeria, was a contraption created by colonial Lord Lugard without any consultation whatsoever with the constituents that will make up that country. 
And when you don't have democratic negotiations, you are going to have the kind of problems that we have. So for me, this is the time for us to revisit our demand. And in the peak of the anti-military struggle, in the peak of the struggle for democracy, we're saying that let there be a sovereign national conference with elected representatives of the people, of the workers, of the youths, to discuss the way forward, the basis of the relationship. But each government thinks they can carry on. And increasingly, we are discovering that it's, it's even difficult to talk of a Nigeria you know, in existence. So the, the, I think that uh, all these ideals that Yinka articulated one way or the other, they are there for the records and they have become reference materials. There is no way you are going to discuss the nationality question in Nigeria, for example. There is no way you are going to discuss the issue of right to self-determination that you are not going to make reference to Yinka Udumaki. So for me, that in itself is a major uh, contribution to the development of this country. Well, um, it was, um, you know, I won't say it was shocking because on the on the 15th of uh, January, when we had the annual Ganifa Wemi lecture in Lagos, organized by the Nigerian Bar Association Ikeja branch, uh, it was at the event. I was one of the organizers, and uh, that day, I, from what I observed, I had to call him later in the night after the program. And I said, uh, when I called him, I said, Nika, why did you come for the program? You are sick. Let's not uh, deceive ourselves. You, you are very, very, because when he was getting up, I was watching him when he came in and when he was uh, going out. I said, uh, when I was telling him that he needed to take some time off to uh, take care of his uh, health, you know. In fact, I was, uh, I said, if you let me speak with his, uh, that I was going to call Joe, the wife. That I was going to call Joe, the wife, you know, so that I would uh, also make that observation to her. It was very obvious that it wasn't, uh, you know, but he just dismissed it as if it wasn't anything. He said, oh, no, just he stepped on something. That was why I saw him, you know. So I kept on monitoring him thereafter to find out what was going on and he was moving from one place to the other still carrying on his normal activity so i thought okay maybe my observation maybe it was a one-off thing he was very active you know just kept on you know um, being active and all that you know until of course i got to know that he was ill and he was in the hospital and we're monitoring trying to see what can be done and all that he got out of it the last test that was done was that uh, you know he had uh, tested negative to covid and we're all happy that it was going to he was going to so but unfortunately the effect you know of that ailment it was just about two three weeks or so you know um, he died so in a way since I knew he was ill and I was being, you know, although he denied it to me that he wasn't here and he was active, he worked, he worked, you know, almost onto his uh, death. When I was, uh, you had the wife also saying that uh, even on the day he was going to be, we ended up in the hospital, he was in, I have appointment here, I have appointment here, I have appointment there, you know, so to that extent, you know, I would say that uh, it was unexpected, uh, you know, don't let me say shocking, but because the last test said he had, you know, tested negative to COVID and we're all hopeful that, thank God, he was going to get out of it. It's only for us to hear that, you know, he passed on. So it's to that test. Uh, you know that, um, I would, my own final year in the university was his uh, second year in the university. It was, uh, let me put it this way, um, we were all Marxists. Uh -huh. Marxism believed in the universal brotherhood of man. Uh, we see, we say that society, conflict in society, the way we see it is basically between the haves 
and the have not you know so we see from the prism of class you know that was uh, his up upbringing political ideological upbringing uh, but when he now decided that uh, the conflict in society is between uh, what he perceived you know as uh, something between uh, in, in not society generally but in the nigerian context you know that there's something more basic than that class thing which is to resolve the nationality question in nigeria uh, some of us don't agree <laughs> with him on uh, on that but he says something about him that uh, he's a man of his own conviction and once he's convicts or convicted about something he's bold enough to say it he doesn't he will not say because oh i'm going to disappoint uh Olumide if i say this thing i will not say it he knew I, for instance that i will not agree with him but he, he still said it and since he made that declaration he had been working along uh, that line you know when i challenge him or sometimes I, oh why did you do this and so on and so forth and he said oh it was because i don't know how many of you know comrade Olauni. you know he was uh, an old masist who worked all his life for you know fighting the cause of the masses of nigeria uh, but that it was at the airport to tell in the aftermath of the june 12th thing that comrade Olauni told him that uh, him and some other persons that he felt that he wasted his life fighting for class and all that because when the June 12th issue came up uh, he was disappointed that uh, people he had always struggled with who always saw themselves as belonging to the same political tendency but who happened to be from the north you know sort of lined up behind the ruling class of the north forgetting everything so because of that he came to the conclusion too that's complete allowing that uh, the nationality question in nigeria has to be resolved once it is resolved then we can talk about the class issue and so on and so forth like i said it's not something i personally believe in but that was what convicted uh, him on it so that's number one number two was that uh, uh, and I was sharing this with uh, Comrade Landry when we were coming here. You know that Nyanka worked for Buari in the you know 2011 election. You know, so when he decided that you know towards the 2015 election, and I was asking him, you know, he was not supporting him again. And I said, Ah, Nyanka, what's wrong with you? You were spokesman for this uh, person. What you traveled all over Nigeria telling us to vote for him. How will you now come back and say what I said yesterday? Eh? I'm no longer saying it again. Buari was your candidate. Was you know you saw him as the person that would resolve Nigeria's problem and all that. Then suddenly now you are now saying, are, are you going to go out and campaign against him? Given all you have said about him in the past, how, how good, how this and so on and so forth, you know, and. Uh, he said something that was quite significant then to me. Uh, I've shared this with a few persons. And he said, Olumide, uh, well, that's what he calls me. Olumide, <laughs> you, you think Nigeria is uh, going nowhere now? You think Nigeria is divided? I lived with this man for about 18 months. I was his spokesman. I wasn't just speaking for him. I lived with him. I lived in his house. You know, I traveled all over the place with him. By the time he finishes, if he has the chance to rule Nigeria, by the time he finishes Niger with Nigeria, what you call conflict now will not, uh, it will be a child's play. And I'm putting him directly when he said, he said, I'm putting him, that man will put a dagger to the heart of Nigeria, you know. So I was, I said, what do you mean? He said, well, most of you observe from, I live with him, and I'm telling you this from what I observed, from what I saw closely, you know. He didn't say more than that. 
you know, but you know, I kept on teasing him. Oh, it's because of Tinumbu. You don't want to join him again because of Tinumbu. And I said, no, 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 no. Buari is not like that. Oh. If he wants to work with Buari, he will still work with Buari. It's not the issue. It's a principled issue. He believes that the country, at that time, that the country was divided. And if the problem was not, if we don't address it, the country will get more divided. And he doesn't believe that Buhari was the best person to rule Nigeria, you know, at that time and in that circumstance. That was the context in which he made uh, that uh, statement. Quote me said, that man will put a dagger to the heart of Nigeria, you know. So, you know, I'm talking about uh, being bold and being saying it once he's convinced about something. We just uh, so he didn't allow the fact that he worked with Buari. I was challenging him. Are you going to go out there now to say what I said yesterday? I'm no longer saying it today. So anybody can say whatever they can say whatever they like about me. They can have any impression they have about me, you know. But I'm doing this out of conviction. I do not believe that this is the man Nigeria needs at this time because like you said by the time he finishes with Nigeria you you think you have crisis now the crisis would have you know gone beyond the, what anybody could imagine and that was the reason why he said he was not going to you know uh, work for him you know and he went on and you know work for the other uh, candidate so you have that about Inka. He doesn't really, he doesn't allow sentiment or what people would think of him to be, to make his own decision. He be, once he believes that something is right, he goes for it. You don't necessarily have to agree with him. Like I told you many of the things I don't agree with him, but that doesn't mean that he won't say, oh, what will Inka think about this? What would a social person think about this? He acts based on his conviction. You don't necessarily have to agree with the principle he's pursuing, but that's that's Nika for you.